Had you ever had those moments in your life when you, or days in your life where you say, today is just not my day? Have you ever said that to yourself? Yeah. Try to make this thing advance here. There we go. This is your year. This is our year. Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through, uh, 31 through 38. And the idea is perseverance. I want to tell you about the story of the little train that could. 1930, written by Waddy Piper. And we're going to summarize this story because we want to get to the Christian version. But to summarize it, uh, the first train, he was trying to uh, take off and he couldn't go anywhere. He was stuck. So he asked this uh, passenger train coming by, hey, can you help me out? Can you get me up that hill? I need to get to the village children on the other side. And the passenger, side tra the passenger train said, no, I carry people. I'm too important. I can't help you. So he waits for another train to come by to help him out. And the freight train comes by, and he says, no, I'm carrying freight. I'm too important. I can't help you out. So then he finds this little toy train, and it's not big enough really to do much of anything. But he says, can you help me? Can you help me get over that hill? So she says, yes, I'll try. That's all I can do. So they went up the hill, and they're huffing and puffing and saying, I think I can, I think I can, to get over that hill. And as they top the hill and go down to the bottom, said, I, I thought I could, I thought I could. So, but the Christian version of the little train that could, we don't think we can. We want, we want to know that we can. I know I can be successful in the plan of God. And I know I can climb that hill. I can get to the other side and pick up speed because God can do anything. We read in Philippians 4 and verse 13 about Paul and what he says he can do. And he's been beaten. He's been shipwrecked. He's been stoned and left for dead. But he says, I count it all joy and comfort and contentment in spite of my circumstances. And I can do anything through Christ who strengthens me. Reread in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13, I can know my spiritual condition. These things I have written to you that you may know that you have eternal life. To have that confidence. Now, getting to our text, when we read uh, Romans chapter 8, if I can get it to go again. There we go. I know it's small print, but I'll, I'll start reading in verse 31. Uh, what, shall, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies it, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. And this is the point right here. Yet in all these things, we are, more, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We live in a world of quitters. Quit after, you know, quitting and quitting. Because it's easier to quit than it is to try. It's easier to give up than to go on. Marriage, not what you expect, go find somebody else. Divorce them, go find somebody else. Job too difficult, quit, go find another job. Or ask the government to give you a check, that's even better. Quit, quit, that's easier than sticking it out. Our culture says it's okay to give up. Scripture, not so much. We're told we need to keep going, and we need to be passionate about our purpose in this life. We need to find that purpose. Have you found the purpose in your life? 24, 2024 has just begun. Yes, it's 
uh, a month in. We're already into the second month. And how has your year been going so far? In the last lesson uh, that I heard that I was giving up here, we looked at 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 20, where it reads, For you were bought with a price, and because of that we are a purchased people. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit. That tells us we are a possessed people. And it says in your spirit, which are God's. That tells us we're a possessed people. And all these things we know we have to have a passion for that purpose. We are also told that we are to keep fear God and keep his commandments. Isn't that also a purpose in our life? We need to have that passion. And when we find that purpose and everything, we can be passionate about it. If you're dealing in life with difficulties like depression or fear or anger, controlling your tongue, that's another one. If you had days where you just didn't grow and you didn't want, you wanted to get so far, but you haven't grown that much. We've all had those days. And there may be times in your life where we become stationary. We have days like that where we just don't grow like we want. And maybe we take a step back, maybe two steps back. And so we're trying to go forward, but we're reverting to our old habits just for a little while. And I know that because we're all human. We all have these changes, and it's so hard to make changes in our lives. Habits, uh, mindset, attitudes. There are moments that there are hills to climb. Changing a habit takes time. Changing a mindset can be a struggle. Changes like running toward God instead of away from Him. Instead of just being a believer. It's not a cakewalk. God never said it would be. We read in the Word, we read in God's Word about self-denial and cross-bearing and service, being, uh, foot washing. But we can stumble, we can struggle. We hear from our culture to quit, but it's not worth, that it's not worth it. We need to do something easier. So tonight I want to look at uh, three observations. And after these observations are made, we're going to sing a song of encouragement for anyone who needs to... Uh, ask for prayers. <coughs> See if I can get it. There you go. Life is tough and short lived. But of course, you could always say, life is tough and then we die. And I don't mean that to be cynical, I don't mean that to be discouraging. You can lay there on the ground and you fail in your struggles instead of getting back up. So life is tough, and you can quit when you fail, or you can keep fighting until you win. We've heard uh, the same thing said at ball games where our children play, uh, little children's games, and the coaches might tell them that winners never quit and quitters never win. Of course, life is tough for the child of God, and Satan wants you to quit. Life is hard because Satan wants you to quit learning to love. He wants you to stop fixing your attitude. He wants you to stop learning to forgive. He wants us to just lay down and die. And so that's the reason my point, uh, you know, life is tough and short-lived. We can just uh, quit because Satan is a roar roaring lion that doesn't care about you. He, cares, he doesn't care about people in the world. He cares about us. So we're the ones that he's coming, Satan's coming after us. When Satan sees that we're making changes in our lives, he wants us to trip and fall. And if you've been coming to the Wednesday night Bible class back here in the back, we've been uh, looking at uh, dealing with Satan's tactics and the ways that we can deal with him, the way that he deceives us and tells us that we, think that we can quit and ways that we can quit. When we take a nap in our Christianity, he doesn't want to come after us so hard if we just lay down. But when we find a purpose and a passion and we have a priority, making it a priority in our lives, striving for our Christianity, he's going to try harder to knock us down. You think about it, Satan went after Adam and Eve. 
He didn't go after the monkeys in the garden, did he? He went after Adam and Eve because they had a relationship with God. When we have that relationship with God, Satan's going to come toward us more. Satan went after Abraham. He went after David. He went after Peter. But Satan never went after uh, King Ahab. He never went after Jezebel. Why? Because he already had them. And they were entrenched in, in deceitfulness. So he didn't need to go after them. If uh, Satan even went after the world today, would we even notice? Because he already has them. Uh, we read in uh, Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 16, For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again, but the wicked shall fall in calamity. What does that tell us? How many times can we fall? Seven times? Seventy times? And if we just get up, I can still be righteous. Isn't that what that means, that tells us? We have heard from uh, so many people that uh, it's just, you know, if you don't want to do anything, you can quit or you can, and you can go home. But a righteous person can fall so many times and still be righteous. Uh, and all the uh, deceitful things that Satan is trying to teach us, we can learn uh, from reading about him that he battled Jesus for 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness. And he just wasn't tempted those three times. In Luke chapter 4, said, Satan says that I'll be back. I'll be back at an opportune time. There'll be times in our lives where we might let our guard down and Satan will come back at a better time to try to trick us and tempt us. Don't you think Satan was at Gethsemane, when Jesus was on that cross, just telling Jesus, quit, quit. Satan will just keep coming and coming. Failure is not getting knocked down. Failure is staying down and letting Satan kick you while you're still down. That's failure. So we don't need to let him win. If you're fighting depression in your life, the light doesn't come on overnight. It comes up a little bit at a time. There'll be times in our lives where we're trying to fight these things in our lives. But Satan will pull down that curtain again, and you'll be back there again. But you can't let him keep the curtain down. You've got to keep on trying. If you're trying to keep your tongue from doing things that you don't want it to, you just can't change it with one prayer. That's not going to work. You've got to keep on keeping on. Conquering this year may not be easy, but it can be done if we hold out for the victory. We have to take it one step at a time, and if we stumble, we got to get up and keep going. I mean, seriously, who gets it right the first time? We read in the scriptures, Abraham did not get it right the first time. Moses did not get it right the first time. Peter didn't get it right the first time. So we keep getting up. Our second uh, note to note is uh, quitting is a guaranteed L. You quit, you lose. And that really sounds like the same thing that I've been saying before, but we read in Luke chapter 9, verses 57 through 62, the people were making excuses. They're telling Jesus, we need to bury our dead. We need to check on our parents. Jesus says, look, Come follow me. I don't have a place to lay my head. I don't own anything in this world. But just come follow me. And if you put your hand to the plow and look back and you stop plowing, you're not worthy. You're not worthy. And so we, we look at that and we say, we talk about not being worthy. If I'm not worthy because I quit, that means I am worthy if I keep going. It's not because I've earned it or done anything to be worthy, but it's because God sees us through the eyes of Jesus. Judas lost, not because he betrayed a Savior. There have been many times where we've done that ourselves. But Judas lost because he quit and he never came back. Peter did not lose 
because he, he came back. He struggled, but he came back. I've been called to this life to stick it out, even if it costs me my life. Revelation 2.10. Be faithful even to the point of death. If I quit, I lose. But if I keep going, I win. And number three, and this is a big one, I've already won. So why forfeit? If you already know the outcome of the game and it's in your favor, why not continue in it? Why not, continue, why not finish it? We are already conquerors in Romans chapter 8. More than that, we are more than conquerors. There's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. I have already overwhelmingly conquered. The decisive victory, the only way that I lose is to throw in the towel. That's why, and we read also in Daniel chapter 3, and I'll start reading about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and their faith being challenged. They're being told that there are statues there, and they have to bow, and the music is playing. And so they're just saying, you can save your life, just bow, and, and your life will be saved. Don't be so stubborn. Daniel chapter 3, they said to the king, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Now, what is, what is it that they're saying there? They're saying it's all good. Regardless of the outcome, they're saying it's all good. And that's what Paul tells us in Philippians. If we live, it's good. If I die and go to be with Christ, it's good. As long as I am faithful. I still battle the pain every day in my life. I still have my faults. That hasn't changed, but my attitude has, and it's all good. That doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt, does it, Henry? It still hurts. It doesn't mean that bad things don't happen to good people. It doesn't mean that Satan isn't going to try to knock me down. But unless I forfeit, God wipes away all the tears. In the end, we win. And God says, it's all good. Just trust me. God says, hold on. Just keep holding on. And I will pull you out of it. There are times in our lives where we might have issues with a death, a loved one passing away, and we need to go find help because we can't deal with the pain, the grief. I found a book that I really like to read. It's by Don Williams, and it's called Walking with Those Who Weep. Uh, there are times in our lives where we might need to go get help, professional help, but don't just sit there. We need to keep going. We need to work with our circumstances. And that brings us to a next uh, point. The circumstances in our life do not negate the love of God. As the circumstances get worse, the love of God increases in ways that I need it to. And the circumstances of life do not negate the plan of God. The plan of God was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And when the pain gets too much for us, God says, let me wipe that tear. Let me carry that burden for you. Let me have that sin. I'll take it to the cross for you. I cannot ex expect you not to stumble. You cannot expect the path will be all smooth. If I can run, I will run. If I can walk, I'll walk. And if I have to crawl, then I'll crawl. But I can never quit. Don't let Satan win. Jesus paid too much for us to keep to, to, so that we keep overcoming the hurt. 
and battling our addictions or the habits or sins or whatever the problems that we have in our lives, keep reading the book. Keep walking with Christ. It doesn't get all that easy, but it may get easier. He'll guarantee you victory as we all stand and sing.